for you this lesson from Unity of the Keys Spiritual Center. So we have been looking at the principles that are universal principles that are depicted in this book by Dr. Orestes Gutierrez. And I had a funny experience yesterday when I was doing number three, validate when you meditate and pray. I don't know if I made that up or if it was from a previous affirmation of his, maybe from the manuscript, but in his actual book, this is called validation through meditation. And I had to really sit with that and think about it. But for those of you who were not here before, let's go through all five, starting with live your truth. I'd like you to say the live your truth, and then I'll repeat what's usually our typical unity affirmation. You can just listen to that part. Together, live your truth. Knowing and understanding the laws of life, also called truth, are not enough. A person must also live the truth that he or she knows. Together, one presence and one power. God is absolute good everywhere present. Three, validate when you meditate and pray. And now I want you to say this, validation through meditation. Together, validation through meditation. Subtle but powerful difference. Prayer is creative thinking that heightens the connection with God mind and therefore brings forth wisdom, healing, prosperity, and everything good. Together, experience is created by how we think. Human beings create their experience by the activity of their thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning in thought. Stardust in everyone. Human beings have a spark of divinity within. Their very essence is of God and therefore are also inherently good. So all of these go together. And as I contemplated validation through meditation and what it means to validate when you pray and meditate, I had to define validation. To validate something means to verify it, to put it to the test of credibility, to do some research, to investigate the truth. Validation in the field of cognitive psychology is another word for acceptance. Psychological validation is the recognition and acceptance of thoughts, feelings, ideas, sensations, and behaviors as understandable and not crazy or off the rails. Validation is a skill. It requires mental, emotional, intuitive, and cognitive capacities. It can be severely limited by our programming and our defense mechanisms. Defense mechanisms, according to many theories of psychology and brain science, are not conscious processes. Denial, for example, if we knew we were doing it, it would be lying, right? But psychological denial protects the ego from something it isn't ready to face. That's the theory. And there is some evidence in brain science that goes along with that. For example, under situations of extreme stress, or rage, or drug or alcohol intoxication, our brain shuts down the prefrontal cortex, which is our higher decision-making process, and also is the way that we have memory. So in extreme situations of stress, have you ever known someone that was completely enraged and they said and did things and the next day they say, I didn't say that, or I didn't do that, right? They don't remember. So, 
When the brain shuts down instinctually in dangerous cir circumstances, there's a reason. Because our brains and our bodies are programmed for survival. And the reason that it shuts down is because thinking, higher, or higher processes, take a lot of energy. And so in order for us to survive, we shut that down. So we have more energy to run, hide, or fight that saber-toothed tiger. From a psychological point of view, projection, denial, identification with the aggressor, and blaming all protect the ego from apparent danger. The ego does not want to wake up to truth. The ego will be a worthy opponent on the spiritual path. <laughs> that is why validation and surrender through meditation is a higher order of intelligence and a developed skill. It takes practice and it takes courage. In the context of our current political landscape, the Senate hearings, the demonstrations, the outpouring from people of the things that have been done to them, the, the sexual violence in our country, witnessing this and also witnessing the way some of our elected officials publicly mock and shame people. It's very important that we know how to validate. One way to practice validation is to contemplate, to take your anger, frustration, fear, judgment, and blaming to your prayer time, to contemplate what is that person feeling, experiencing, projecting, and how does that fit with my own experience? Are, this, are they coming from the heart or the intellect? Are they angry about something completely irrelevant to the situation? What is the intent being communicated? And then release them to their far greater good. Any negativity not released any resending resentment that is being sent out to those people out there only comes back to you, only affects you, only keeps you stuck in anger and fear and resentment. So, Taking your questions into meditation is the first step in releasing, learning to validate what's true and what's not true for you personally. Then you have to do it relationally. And the first place to start with that, again, is in your meditation practice because you have to learn first how to be fully present. If you don't know how to be mindful of your own emotions, how to be fully present in the room, how to calm your own monkey mind, you cannot be present for anyone else. And that's the first step in emotional validation of another human being. Being there, just being present to them means really listening and not multitasking or doing something else or thinking about what you think or thinking about your response, but being present to the full range of all the emotion, which is not easy. 
most of us would much rather not face intense emotion. Most of us don't know what to say when people are upset. So we avoid it, we push it away, we deny it, rather than sit with the discomfort of it. Which is why I think we're having the experience we're having. Accurate reflection, reading the feelings of others correctly, not projecting and not making up your own reality about what happened, takes work. It begins within, with purifying your own mind, with calming yourself, with being able to be objective with your own emotions and feelings, like they're a feather in the wind, knowing that you are not your emotions, they come and they go. You are not your thoughts, they come and they go. You are more than that, and so is everyone else. Validation through meditation is a process of waking up to who you really are beyond the fluctuations of mind, emotions, reactionary habitual patterns of mental judgment, blaming, placating, being super reasonable or irrelevant, being able to embrace the full range of your own thinking and emotion is in itself a spiritual attainment. Reverend Francis Folks, in effectual prayer many years ago, this unity minister wrote this. To acknowledge that we ourselves have brought into our world everything that is less than good, and to forgive ourselves for all the blame we have ever attached to God for that, or to others for our sorrows and sufferings that have come to us in this life, is a very important preparation for prayer. Preparation for prayer. Do you want me to read that again? <clears throat> to acknowledge that we ourselves have brought into our world everything that is less than good and to forgive ourselves for all the blame that we've attached to God or to others for the sorrows and sufferings that have come to us in this life is a very important step in preparation for prayer. So what's prayer? It's said that when the mind knows, we call it knowledge. When the heart knows, we call it love. When the being knows, we call it prayer. Unity has a five-step method of prayer. The first step is relaxation. Like Francis Folks is talking about, you have to release your anger, your judgment, your blaming. You might be incredibly angry at God. You might be incredibly angry at the Senate. You might be incredibly angry at your friend or spouse or whatever. You can't pray in that condition. So you have to relax. You have to do something. Take a walk. Breathing, yoga, tai chi, something. To get yourself into a place where you are relaxed enough that you can concentrate on something spiritual. That's the second step, concentration. A concentration can be very simple. Breathing in love breathing out love, or a mantra, or a picture of Jesus, or a light that you focus on, concentration, an affirmation, a prayer that you say like the Lord's Prayer is a method of concentration. Then, from that place, you go into meditation, where you hold that focus and begin to watch your mind and thoughts, Charles Fillmore says, like a chemist 
watches his solution very carefully until because of your attained focus, you transcend that and enter into the silence and come out in thanksgiving. Those are the five steps. Charles Fillmore says that prayer is more than supplication. It's an affirmation of truth that already eternally exists, but which is not yet conscious. Last week, I woke up in the middle of the night with an assignment to share with you this teaching on prayer from the Persian mystical tradition. It took me a while to find it. I hadn't thought about it in years. It's about Moses meeting a shepherd in the desert. So I share it with you in the context of this particular moment, this teaching story from medieval times. <laughs> Moses heard a shepherd on the road praying, God, where are you? I want help. I want to fix your shoes and comb your hair, God. I want you with me. I want to wash your clothes and pick the lice off. I want to bring you milk. Your little hands and feet. Ooh, I want to be there for you when you go to bed. I want to sweep your room and keep it neat, God. My sheep and goat are yours. All I can say just thinking of you, God, is I and A. Moses could stand it no longer. Who are you talking to? The one who made us, made the earth, and made the sky? Don't talk about shoes and socks with God. And what's this, your little hands and your feet? Such blasphemous familiarity, like you're chatting with your uncle. Only something that grows needs milk. Only someone with feet needs shoes. Not God, even if you meant God's human representatives, as when God said, I was sick and you did not visit me, even then, this tone would be foolish and irreverent. Use appropriate terms. Fatima is a fine name for a woman, but if you call a man Fatima, it's an insult. Body and birth language, they're all right for us on this side of the river, but not for addressing the origin, not for Allah. The shepherd was heartbroken. He repented, tore his clothes, sighed and wandered out into the desert. A sudden revelation came to Moses. He heard God's voice. Moses, Moses. You have separated me from my own. Did you come as a prophet to unite or to sever? I've given each being a separate and unique way of seeing and knowing and saying that knowledge. What seems wrong to you is right for that shepherd. What is poison to one is honey to another. Purity and impurity, sloth and diligence in worship, these mean nothing to me. I'm apart from all that. Ways of worshiping are not to be ranked as better or worse than another. Hindus do Hindu things. The Dravidian Muslims in India do what they do. It's all praise. It's all right. It's not me that's glorified in the act of worship. It's the worshiper. I don't hear the words. I look inside. Forget phraseology, Moses. I want burning, yearning. Be friends with your burning. Burn up your thinking and your forms of expression. Moses, those who pay attention to ways of behaving and speaking are one sort. Lovers who yearn for God are another. Moses, don't impose a property tax on a burned out village. Inside the Kaaba, it doesn't matter which direction you point your prayer rug. The love religion has no code or doctrine, only God. God spoke deeper mysteries to Moses and visions and words that can't be recorded here. 
He left himself and came back. He went to eternity and came back. Many times this happened. I love this line. It's foolish of me to try to say this. It would just uproot human intelligence if I did and shatter all writing pens. <laughs> this is the good part. Moses ran after the shepherd, following bewildered footprints, rising up like a wave, sideways, down, geomancy, depicting his wandering state until he finally caught up with him. Moses said, I was wrong. God has revealed to me there are no rules of worship. Say whatever and however your loving tells you. Your sweet blasphemy is the truest devotion. Through you a whole world is freed. Loosen your tongue. Don't worry about what comes out. The shepherd looked deeply into Moses' eyes. Moses, Moses, my friend. I've gone beyond all that. You applied the whip and my horse shied and jumped out of itself. The divine nature and my human nature came together. Bless your scolding hand, Moses. I can't say what happened. What I'm saying now, I don't understand. It can't be said. And the shepherd grew very still with so much love and gratitude in his heart. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself, not the state of the mirror. The flute player puts breath into a flute, but who makes the music? Not the flute, the flute player. Whenever you speak praise or thanksgiving to God, it's always like this dear shepherd's simplicity. And when you eventually see through the veils to how things really are, you will keep saying again and again and again, this is certainly not the way I thought it would be. <laughs> I believe, like Moses' remarks to the shepherd in the desert that awakened them both, that the behavior of our elected officials in the Senate and everyone in the world stage today are moving us in the direction we are meant to go. It was not lost on me that in the midst of all this attention and conflict, when the Nobel Peace Prize could have gone to thousands of other people, it went to two courageous people who are working to end sexual violence against women. Nadia Murad, a 25-year-old survivor of sexual slavery, who's become an activist and an outspoken advocate for women, and Dennis McQuiggy, a Congolese physician who founded a hospital and recovery center for survivors, now have more support, now have assistance, now have recognition for the work they do. Our prayers may not be answered in exactly the way that we hope or as quickly. However, we can trust in divine order, divine timing. And what the Lakota call Daku Wakonskaska, roughly translated, something sacred is always in motion. Ellen Debenport, in her book, The Five Principles, says this, prayer and meditation are not to solicit God, but to solidify us. To pray, to meditate, to validate, is to align with good, to renew and refresh our resolve, to affirm the basic goodness the original blessing that we are, and to contact that within every human person, and to connect with that force of absolute good always present in every moment, everywhere in the universe, one presence, one power. To pray sincerely is to move from ego to soul, to the Christ of our being, 
and to live from our highest truth. We can't judge what's right for anyone else, and certainly we are told repeatedly by Jesus and the saints, don't judge by what? Appearances, right? We have to look beneath the surface of things. So let's remember just like it was for Moses and the shepherd, waking up is not going to be like we anticipated it would be. And like Moses and the shepherd, we can definitely state again and again, this is certainly not the way we thought it was. This is not the way we thought it would be. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.